might just I just I might just say that this is uh, learning together our weekly event which we're holding today at noon GMT which is throwing some people off I think I'm going to go into tapped in and see if there are people there last week there were I'm, that's another Peter I got over there so uh, um, anyway last week we had about a dozen people there who weren't aware of where we were or would be the people don't read the schedules they just come to the events. So I'm going to go over there and see if I can corral some people, but I would suggest you go ahead and get started because, uh, well, of course, you guys can go on after the hour, but I'll have, um, I'll have to teach a class at uh, 1300 GMT. So uh, anyway, well, John, uh, we're really good to have you here, and Jeff, of course, the master of all ceremonies. And... Um, yeah, so, okay, well, go ahead, proceed. So you're going to tell us about Wiki to Speech, which is really important. But I, I might just mention we met John uh, in, as a result of EduMook, and uh, he, he's uh, a rugby fan and also a PhD <laughs> student in New Zealand, as it just coincidentally happens. And so, anyway, he's working on a product, a really interesting thing called Wiki to Speech, which was kind of fascinating people with its... Uh, uh, unique aspects and uh, anyway he's going to tell us about it so uh, without further ado John please take it away okay I've got a few slides here and a kind of a, a presentation that I'm I'm screen sharing uh, so you actually get to see how the authoring of a, a wiki to speech presentation works it really is just the same as creating any other PowerPoint or open office presentation with the addition of uh, of some speaker notes that get rendered through text-to-speech into uh, a, a slideshow that delivers itself or in the most recent uh, versions of the software into a video so you could have your your PowerPoint or slideshow just go uh, directly and turn into a, uh, a YouTube or, or other uh, video format to, to be shared so uh, this uh, presentation I've titled Stigmergy and the Wealth of Networks to highlight uh, an interesting paper I've run across recently. And really I want to talk about these three new concepts that are, are, I think, working together these days about sharing and mobility and artificial intelligence uh, to create uh, some really exciting opportunities for us. Uh, the Wealth of Networks paper actually has been around for a while and I only just discovered it. Uh, it's by a, a Yochai oh. Benkler of Yale. Have you heard of, about this guy? Yes, he's got a really nice ebook which we've linked from uh, my multi literacies page. It's called Barry Bush Bookstore. I call it the Barry Bush Bookstore. And yeah, uh, he's he's got a really nice book in there. Uh, I'd have to look it up to get his exact title, but yeah, he's well known. Yeah. So the link I think I put on the page here uh, is a wiki. And it has a, a variety of remixes and uh, adaptations of, of uh, the wealth of networks. Um, but the things I pulled out particularly related to this whole idea that sharing itself is a way of producing value, uh, and that you know we think of uh, you know all of the the market driven uh, per value production systems that we have, where essentially there winds up being some financial exchange. But there's also a very significant place in uh, our social interactions for uh, non-monetary transactions, you know, where we help one another and share things with one another. You know, if you think of, uh, you know, parenthood, for example, it's, it's not a compensated activity, but it, it certainly is critical and, and extraordinarily valuable, you know, for, for uh, creating value in society. Uh, the other side of uh, this um, analysis touched on the whole idea of uh, you know the, the clay shirky here comes everybody you know what what allows for these sort of collaborative efforts to uh, to be so successful um, Benkler points out uh, modularity and fine-grained contributions uh, so if you think about Wikipedia for example that the whole thing is broken up into a whole bunch of encyclopedia articles so there's all these modules and the work that any individual can do on those modules is very small potentially you know they can go and correct one misspelled word or or make 
very fine grained edits to to what's uh, already been um, uh, started as you know a, a stub article. Yeah, I think Binkler is referenced in uh, Shirky's second book, um, Cognitive Surplus. Great. Have you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm familiar so with cognitive make... surplus, and and I think this is again where where we're headed is that uh, uh, the more we share, and, and uh, the more we take up sort of this spare time that we all seem to have as a result of our our the the sort of level of affluence and uh, technological. Um, Access that the, the internet and all of our you know really quite high powered computing personal computing devices give us you know we don't we don't actually use all of the processing power and storage of our, our devices but uh, if we figure out ways that we can combine them and, and work get them to work together you know the, we we make something even bigger and more powerful which is I'm getting into that in just another slide <laughs> so <coughs> excuse me. Um, the, the, there's a biological word for all of this, I think, that, that I think could be used more often is stigmergy, and uh, it relates to uh, the, the concept, of, particularly for things like ants that uh, are, are termites, you know, how they build a, a termite, giant termite mound by, by working together, all by sending, you know, sort of chemical signals about what they've just done that helps the next insect that comes along to to do the right thing and uh, increase the size of the termite mound or in the case of, of ant trails uh, to to work out what's the most efficient or shortest path between the nest and say some food source and uh, the uh, there's no sort of magic to this what uh, this web page here is showing is that uh, there's just sort of facts about the behavior of the ants that they, they follow trails of chemicals that are laid down by the other ants and that those trails don't last forever and that uh, so shorter paths take less time to traverse so a longer path would degrade more and so you wind up going down the shortest path uh, because it's the one that has the strongest chemical signals. This is essentially the way it works out. So, uh, I'd like to. Can I can I just interrupt for a minute? I'd absolutely. Like to welcome, please. Yeah, I'd like to welcome Claire uh, Braden Siskin in the uh, chat room. She says she's listening to a presentation about ants. You might want to just yes. set her straight there. <laughs> Uh, talking about how ants and uh, human behavior might be uh, similar because here we're now looking at uh, a, a human created uh, pheromone trail if you will uh, a thing called stack overflow which is where uh, computer programmers go to get all kinds of specific uh, uh, questions answered and the way the uh, programmers essentially tell one another, you know, when they're on to a uh, a good food source, or, or when they're when they're uh, they're looking at a, a very valuable answer to a, a particularly difficult question. Is the voting system where where uh, each of the uh, answers that's proposed for a question gets uh, you know sort of a plus or a minus uh, from every uh, user of that question, and all of the uh, the, the questions and answers uh, are all sort of date uh, and time stamped. So as you look through a, sort of the history of answers, you can see when when things are starting to perhaps get stale. Uh, and so to working with those things together, uh, it, it's uh, I think very much like the example of uh, the ants that you. Uh, you're finding out as quickly as possible the answers to the questions, the best answers to the questions that you have when, when you visit this website. And of course, uh, the whole uh, Google search system is, is another example of this sort of stigmergy in action because what it's done is to look at the places where people have created links between various web pages as a proxy for those are 
destinations that have been linked to are the interesting ones. And so those are the things that, that pop up at the top of your, your search results is the most linked to uh, web pages. Um, so what is getting linked to the most? And uh, one of the resources, of course, that's, that's been extraordinarily successful and useful for uh, particularly distributing knowledge is this you know, Wikipedia, which uh, they've just introduced a new sort of a dashboard for, for monitoring the statistics of, of Wikipedia use. And uh, you can see it's running at, at the rate of you know, maybe about 13 billion uh, uh, page views per month uh, at this stage. Uh, I don't know if that uh, screen is too small for you to read, but uh, I, I've got a set of links uh, for, for some of these pages which I could, uh, could share, perhaps in the chat. Is that a, a good way to do that? Sounds good. Uh, well... I'll have to figure out how to get back into the... Or not. <laughs> there we go. How about... Oops. Hit return. You see a bunch of links now? I do. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the other first one was the Wealth of Nations one and the Wikipedia page views, project2wikipedia.org. Sort of halfway down that list would get you to that, that same page that I'm showing you, uh, along with some others that you can come back to. Um, so the, the bottom of this graph actually shows a blue line and a purple line, which are uh, the mobile views. And uh, this is the next sort of technological phenomenon I see kicking in, which, uh, you know, a, a year ago, this is Mary Meeker's analysis of uh, when smartphone sales or shipments would surpass uh, desktop and notebook sales was just going to be, you know, 2012. Uh, so we're actually heading into a, a, a period when uh, more than likely people are going to be accessing the internet and doing all of this um, online stuff uh, with their phone or what is looking increasingly uh, likely with their tablet. So, you know, this is the Kindle Fire, which was just introduced this last week, uh, although it's um, actually not shipping until the middle of November. Uh, you know, it's only a $200 device, which uh, Amazon evidently is selling at roughly, you know, you know production cost uh, to get it out into the marketplace as a portal to all of the, you know, goods and services that they expect to be able to sell through this device. Um, but what's interesting is, uh, from my sort of technological uh, perspective here, is that it's not just the device that they're um, creating in this, uh, with this new product. Uh, they've created an entirely new web browser. And if uh, you haven't heard of it yet, the meet Amazon Silk. And what's the difference between Silk and Chrome and Internet Explorer and Firefox and all those is that Silk has a uh, understanding of um, the what uh, Amazon also possesses, which is this vast cloud of computation uh, capability. The, um, Elastic Compute Cloud is what they call it, which anytime you go out and fetch a web page today, your computer needs to go and p pick out each little piece. You know, here comes another image. Here comes the text that goes next to that image. And uh, the consequence is that it's much, much slower than it needs to be. The, the cloud can go and fetch all those pieces. And when you say, I want the New York Times um, homepage, all of that content can be bundled up into one package and sent directly to your device. And it makes naturally for a much smoother and much, much faster uh, internet experience because 
uh, the, the cloud can keep track of who goes where and um, cache all that and get it, have it all ready to, to deliver right when, when people ask for particularly the most popular things. All again coming back to this idea of you know, what's the shortest path? How do we get to what we want to get to in with the least, you know, in the most efficient way? Uh, so the other device that was introduced this week is uh, the the new iPhone 4S, uh, at same price point as the as the Kindle Fire uh, for the base model. So it seems that you know to enter into this new world of uh, online mobile information access, you're, you're going to have to have at least uh, $200 in the U.S. market, although uh, the IDEOS phone, uh, as I understand it, uh, was selling for as little as $80 in Kenya, uh, and have, they've sold you know 350,000 units in, in Kenya this year. So this is a phenomenon that, that could reach, you know, many, you know, potentially millions of others around the planet at, at even lower costs. And as far as tablets go, the, um, you know, the Indian government is subsidizing the, the production of uh, a seven-inch tablet at, at about $45 per unit uh, that they expect to buy you know, 10 million of over the next uh, few years. To distribute to schools in India, so the, these mobile devices, I think, are going to become you know, learning platforms. Just curious, and, are those what, Android or a different platform? Yep, uh, I believe they are all going to be Android. Yep. So, uh, what Apple's done again to bring something unique in this very competitive market, uh, uh, this company Siri that they acquired, uh, allows voice control, and so that voice control now means um, you know the the difficulties of uh, having a very small device with a difficult to use keyboard uh, could uh, be offset by the the, the computational um, interface uh, uh, driven uh, through voice commands we'll see how that actually all pans out uh, but what's really also very interesting is that um, Stanford is is moving in the direction of uh, offering some of their courses online, and if you've perhaps heard about this artificial intelligence class that 130,000 students have signed up for, it starts tomorrow. Uh, the uh, lecture material will be uh, made available in the form of little snippets of video from one to 15 minutes long, uh, followed up with uh, exercises and exams which will all be offered online and scored and um, uh, if you stick with the, the sort of program I think they uh, say they, they you should expect to put in about 10 hours a week to, to keep up with all of the materials and, and take all of the quizzes and exams and so forth uh, you get a certificate of completion at the end I mean they don't actually give you Credit for it, but they uh, they say that you, your your work online will be acknowledged, which leads to the the kind of thing that's uh, going to be uh, introduced here uh, in November. Um, the the Open Education Resources University, which is the beginning of uh, a uh, idea for. Uh, allowing learners to use online resources to uh, obtain the knowledge that they then turn to an established I don't want to interrupt uh, the guy. Yep. An educational institution like Athabasca or Empire State College uh, SUNY or you can see the list on on the slide of uh, organizations all over the world that are participating in this potentially. Um, which brings me to and I'm sorry that Sir event is John just a Daniel. meeting yep. or a course that is a uh, UNESCO sponsored effort to to create uh, online education resources uh, and ultimately have the use of those resources connected up with accredited 
degree programs. In other words, they have all of this, the learning, be distance learning, but there actually be some local uh, university environment in which you could get credit and, and ultimately be granted a degree for the studying that you've done. And I just wanted to say a quick hello to Claire who has joined us and let her know that she can mute her mic if uh, she needs to. <laughs> She's trying to get her mic to work. She thinks it doesn't work, so we let I, her do a voice check. I believe it. Are you there, Claire? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Wonderful. So your mic does Welcome. work. Feel free to chime in. I <laughs> believe it's early yes. morning for Claire. She's uh, avoiding video. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran across this guy, Sir John Daniel, who apparently has a book called Mega Schools, Technology and Teachers, and uh, gave a presentation uh, to uh, uh, a group of uh, relating to the, the distribution of uh, educational resources in Asia where he put forth this idea which I think is a useful one about the iron triangle of, of education that to, you kind of have these dimensions of access quality and cost um, that are, are really very uh, insidiously bound is the way he put it which if you uh, try and increase your access the likelihood is that your costs are going to go up and, and your your quality may very well go down if you pack too many students into a, a classroom. Uh, whereas, if you really want to increase your quality, again, that's going to drive your your costs up and perhaps make it less accessible. And if you just try to cut your costs, that means you're going to both lose access and and quality in a in a traditional uh, academic kind of uh, setting. But if with technology you can both r reduce your costs and stretch the triangle to increase both access and quality, that, that that's the direction that uh, we, we really should be looking at, at moving. And his um, observations um, relate particularly to uh, the grade school kids who have benefited from many of these uh, uh, global programs uh, to foster uh, education uh, from a young age a and the statistic he gave was 400 million uh, 12 to 17 year olds are surging into um, school systems that do not have places for them so it, it, if again this movement towards making um, learning materials uh, electronically available uh, were to uh, be further developed, uh, there'd be a, a chance for, for those m hundreds of millions of students uh, to be uh, able to access uh, learning that they, they would have missed otherwise. Uh, so this is where I see the, the kind of combination of sharing, mobility, and what I'm calling not artificial intelligence but uh, IA intelligence amplification uh, that if we work together in this sort of modular and um, grand finely grained way to, to build learning materials um, we could meet these these needs uh, in in this new way and, and that's what wiki to speech is all about so um, I've had some other presentations about how wiki to speech works, uh, but I think probably the best thing to do here, unless uh, you, let me take some questions, and I, I just want to finish turning this into a wiki to speech presentation for you, and then um, I'll uh, I'll send you out the link, and then you can see what it's like. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds cool, and and uh, we've also linked to some of those presentations uh, in the Learning Together resources, and, and that goes on to learningtogether.postris.com, which is our yeah. podcast. And uh, so, uh, I noticed that that Jeff is making the MP3s available, so I'll I'll make sure and upload them when I get a breather at some point a year from now maybe no seriously awesome hopefully okay. uh, <laughs> well, hopefully soon but anyway he's made that 
available, so I think I can actually turn that into a podcast. So, oh, sweet. Um, yeah. So we uh, anyway, one of them is the one of the hangouts where I think maybe we met you for the at least I met you for the you know during the edu edu mook. Yep. Uh, yep. You were explaining uh, you, you you did a really neat uh, this demonstration of how we could write into a Titan pad or an Etherpad clone, and yep. you could make your mobile speak that, what we were writing, exactly. which is a, a really nice demonstration. Uh, I've got that, uh, that um, uh, linked and also uh, a video, a YouTube video you made. And um, I, wanna, I think the link you did in WizIQ for um, um, Nelly Deutsch is one of Nelly Deutsch's presentations. So those are linked at, uh, I'll, I'll put the blog here. And so that's anyway, all the great stuff, ahead. Fancy. Okay, uh, you're, you're so, doing the great stuff. <laughs> what's what's uh, going on uh, with the project? Uh, just this last week is that uh, a, a a team of uh, design students has has taken on the project to make over the website. So the the link of wikitospeech.org, uh, which has been you know very much a sort of you know this is a a developer's site with beta software, and if you go there, you know, we really sort of expect you to know how to, you know, program in Python or something like this. Uh, is going to hopefully get transformed into something that's much more user friendly um, and uh, encouraging you to to download the the utilities or the the, the Wiki to Speech software uh, so that you can do what I'm about to do. Which is which is basically to go from looking at slides to to looking at slides with speaker notes, and um, here you can see on this slide I already want it to say to learn more visit wikitospeech.org, and on some of these other slides uh, I just haven't gotten quite finished with my presentation here, but I'll say something like you know we want to share mobile intelligent amplification and we want to stretch access and quality this is the iron triangle uh, obviously I would spend more time on this if I weren't just making a demo uh, John Daniel. It's important actually for me to have something on every slide, so that's why I'm you know, skipping here. And this is uh, the Stanford. One of my philosophies AI is class. that you get only so many key. What was that? You only get so many. You only you get so there. many key presses in a day. I mean, it's finite. <laughs> There's only so many times you can hit the. Uh, key and that's it that's your your output okay so I I I done the voiceover scripts for all the other 14 slides in the presentation here so here's all my my comments uh, down underneath the the slides so now that I've set I've written my talk in effect uh, I can come uh, back and and save the whole thing and I don't know if you get to to see what happens in my the interface or whether you just see the one window that's being displayed right now you're only so. sharing I think the application if you right you okay. might switch that's to fine. sharing your desktop and then we can see uh, all the magic oh okay let's see how I go about doing that so you stop sharing um, your screen and then you share again yeah. and choose your desktop yep. okay which means I need to go back to hangouts with extras I kind of feel and like a rabbit is about screen. pulled out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say hello again. Share screen <laughs> and uh, uh, desktop. Here we go. Share selected window. There, there we go. There we go. All right. And so I'm now back in the presentation software. So I've already saved it out. You can maybe do you see my mouse even? Stigmergy and Wealth. Uh, right now we're ODB. seeing the Hangouts. Uh, right now we're back to the application again. Yeah, it just doesn't catch up, Jeff. Maybe. Okay, now we're in the application. Yep, yeah, it just takes a second. 
Okay, so now I'm. Uh, can you see the file menu just came up? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a save as. Mm -hmm. And what this allows me to do is um, split off the uh, the images of all the slides. Uh, and to, it already see has the file that is the whole presentation with all the speaker notes associated with each slide. Uh, so now I'm just going to go and say, um, let's turn this into a. Ah, sorry, <laughs> and hadn't done this in a day or two. The thing I actually want to do is not a save. It's a uh, if I were in PowerPoint, it would be a save. Uh, in the in Open Office, is an export, another kind of save, ah. mm. uh, where I, I I turn it into um, uh, the HTML document, which. It does exactly this. It, it takes each slide and turns it into an image so that it could be shared through the web. That's, that's what that is. And, and in fact, it needs to know a little bit about how I want to do that. And so I'm on a, a Mac here, and the, the system is specific that it, it wants PNG files on a Mac. So I have to pick this PNG style. You know, I could also pick JPEGs, but uh, that that you'd need to do that on Windows. So it's in the process now of producing slide images for each of the, um, I think what is it, about twenty slides in this presentation. Uh, I've got a little blue kind of uh, hourglass thing working away. Uh, but what I'll be able to do next is to. Um, Run the, the wiki to speech application, which is uh, bundled up into a an application on the um, on the website. So you can download it, and it's it is just a, a standard. Uh, it's in a zip file, but it's a it's a Mac app that you could uh, you know have in your list of applications and click the application. But I'm going to run it from the command line just because you know I'm a a geeky guy, and uh, I, I want to uh, use the um, the Python interpreter and in case anything goes wrong. Uh, the the prior check was originally called Open Allure, uh, and the two parts of the Open Allure project. I don't know if you can see any of this. Um, it yeah. used to be called uh, Wiki to Speech, and uh, uh, the the new utility is the Open Document Presentation (ODP) to wiki to speech and so I'll just type uh, Python and uh, ODB to um, ODP to wiki to speech dot pi is the Python program. So what it's going to do now is just uh, pop up a uh, Dialog which says, "Okay, you want to run this utility? What what uh, presentation do you want to run it on?" It's still loading up Python on my end here. If other people wanted to use Wiki to speech, there is yep. a non-command line option. Absolutely, yeah. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. The the one you download is not a command line version, and and in fact, the stuff that the, the design students is working on, uh, they they propose that there not even be a download. That everything should happen just right on the web, which I think is a great idea. And and with a little bit more work, we should be able to to. Have you ever used Animoto? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we could do, if we could take the Animoto model and apply it to this. Uh, idea it would you know the same kind of concept you just send up your presentation and it would come back to you as a video which is supposedly what's going to happen when I hit the open button here uh, but here now you actually get to see sort of some of the internals it's figured out that it's got all these different slides and it's put them into a zip file mm -hmm. now the reason we want a zip file is because that's the most effective way to get this onto one of these mobile devices Remember, I'm thinking it's the phones and the tablets that you really want to use to give your instruction. And so you want to minimize the bandwidth that you use to send stuff to those devices. 
if you were sending videos to them all day long, you know, you could eat up somebody's data plan in, you know, a day or so. Uh, but if you send them little zip files that have nothing but the slides and the, the uh, script that needs to be read with each slide, uh, then you're using about 25% uh, of the uh, bandwidth that, that a video does. So that's what the zipping is about. So I say thank you for creating the zip file. Now it's going to go and create the slideshow version. And the slideshow version has been tailored so that it should play on anybody's browser. You know, Safari, Internet Explorer, Firefox, um, the uh, the nuances of getting it to do that involve um, saving, well, first of all, creating all the text to speech. So everything I wrote, it's now actually speaking. Uh, but it's the output of the speech is going into files. And the files are uh, on this device, uh, it's a Mac, are natively uh, stored in the. Um, AIFF file format. Uh, this doesn't really matter. It, you know, it, I'm just giving you the technical details here, and uh, they're getting converted into both the MP3 format and this other um, non-proprietary. Uh, it's called the AUG format, which is what Firefox, in particular, likes to have uh, uh, the audio format is AUG, and so that means any browser should be able to open up and play. Uh, the slideshow with that pre-recorded audio. Um, and then the final stage, which has just started now, is I realized once you've got the slide images and the audio for each slide, that uh, you could stream those things together and create a video. So the outputs of the system all together are, uh, first of all, the script which is just nothing but the names of the slides with the words that go with those slides. The zip file, which allows a mobile device to play the presentation. A set of HTML documents that in, have the pre-recorded audio embedded in them. And finally, the fourth thing is this, this video that's, that's currently being produced. So uh, when this whole process is done, which I think all in all it takes uh, maybe a half to a third of the time to generate as, as it would actually take for me to speak it, right? Uh, or, 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 you know, in terms of the, 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 the playback time. So it's something that you can, you know, okay, I, I've created this thing, I know it's not perfect right now. I'm going to have a listen to it, I'll probably make some changes to it, and then I'll just hit the go button again and it'll recreate the whole presentation and video. So there it says saving to output for, and it's automatically opening my browser, and uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but as soon as the browser opens, it's open in Firefox, uh, it, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm laughing again, you, you couldn't hear it. I, I just went out and bought uh, because I found a couple of new voice vendors, a Spanish voice and a German voice. And of course, in getting ready for my presentation today, I forgot to change the voice. So uh, what I just heard was my first slide uh, spoken by a Spanish speaking computer voice, <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually speaking English words. Uh, now, um, would you like to hear that? If we can. All right. Uh, let's see. How would I go about doing that? Maybe if I um, unplug my earphones. Or possibly in your Hangout settings, you might be able to change your microphone input. Or possibly in your Hangout input. settings, you might be able to change your yeah. microphone input. Or I think what you do. Did you hear uh, a yeah. voice? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So it actually works. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And um, uh. I'll put my headphones back in there uh, so that you won't get that echo effect. But now what I'm going to do is go back into the um, uh, 
the folder where all of this happened just now, hopefully, and uh, try and play the um, the uh, the video for you, which again it's called output. Very, you know, exciting name. It's a nine megabyte file. And here QuickTime is now loaded on my system. And again, this is why you wouldn't want to send around a whole lot of video. So even loading locally from my hard disk, it's a, you know, 20 seconds before the, the video even shows up. But here's the presentation. John, is this your PhD project, or is it uh, just an offshoot of your PhD? Uh, the PhD is really about open source software development. Uh, so mm -hmm. what I needed to have for my research was a target project that uh, open source developers would get excited about working on. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is the project. And hopefully, it's gotten to be exciting enough that uh, uh, people will start picking up on it and uh, and developing it, uh, which I think would be just amazing. Because uh, from from where it is now, again, if people can turn it into something that happens entirely online, uh, you know, the way people interact with Wikipedia now, uh, and the the types of uh, incremental um, uh, changes and improvements that uh, can be made into, you know, the instructional materials uh, have this property of being uh, cumulative and, you know, accretive over time, and then potentially just the way, you know, Wikipedia articles can, you know, cross-reference one another. Uh, you know, the, my vision for this whole thing is, is really to build out a, a system that uh, a learner can kind of just drop into the middle of it, uh, uh, in, in fact, explicitly search into the middle of it via a Google uh, search into the text of, of the presentation materials, and then sort of be picked up at that point and guided on in their learning, uh, you know, so that uh, these scripts, uh, as I view them, are, are really uh, I think going to be very much like the videos that we're going to see in the in the Stanford AI class. They're all going to be sort of topic specific explanations that lead into uh, exercises or um, uh, uh, more sort of uh, learning opportunities where you can actually make mistakes by by testing out your knowledge uh, and um, the the. The scripting uh, uh, approach is, is really very straightforward, and um, I can go into that right now, if, unless I've, I've lost you. <laughs> you, well, can, can you can I'm you, more interested in hearing about where, the, where things are hosted. You said, you know, this space where they can navigate through all these materials. Right. What's that space? How's it constructed? Okay. Uh, at the moment... Uh, I can take this presentation, which I've just made, um, which, uh, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of files over here. The, the one file that I'm showing you is, is the, the video file. So if I want to share that with you, I can go Khan Academy on you and just upload it to YouTube. But but is that right. part of the vision? Is a are you would you coordinate with Wikipedia? Would you create sort of your own wiki space? Would it be distributed? Uh, my thinking is that this is very much has to be a, a distributed phenomenon. That uh, the the type of learning. I mean, the closest thing I've seen where people uh, do have a sort of centralized um, collection of learning materials that grows and grows and grows is this this thing called Quizlet. Uh, and if you're talking about doing language learning and you haven't run across Quizlet before, I was very impressed that uh, uh, they uh, adapted the, um, the nuance uh, text-to-speech uh, engines 
so that if we now come in here and say, you know, I want to learn uh, some Spanish, uh, what I get is anybody who is, has been studying Spanish or wants to teach Spanish can produce a set of flashcards uh, in various com combinations. And here's clothes and colors, for example, or 501 Spanish verbs. So these are just like the 3 by 5 cards that you, know, you might have studied the language with before. And you can toggle between looking at you know, both the answer, sort of the, the prompt word, and, and the answer at the same time, or just the answer, and then you have to think of what's the Spanish word, or just the Spanish word, and you have to think of what's the answer. But the interesting thing is just a further down the screen here, uh, again, you probably won't be able to hear this, but if I click Revocar here, I actually get a Spanish voice saying the word Revocar. And so you can hear the pronunciation as well as see the, the written word. And uh, I, again, I, I mentioned that I purchased a Spanish and German voice for wiki to speech this last week uh, precisely to, to enable this kind of multilingual uh, capabilities uh, within wiki to speech. Uh, um, so, uh, so are you envisioning a Quizlet kind of space where everyone uploads their wiki to speech presentations and we navigate through it there? Or this, this is what the design students have decided that, 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 that there needs to be at least some starting point for people where there could be a showcase of materials. But education is such a currently a, a distributed enterprise that the questions I get, you know, from Nelly and the other sort of teachers is, you know, how do I integrate this with my Moodle course management system? And and that turns it much more into a sort of a a, a one-off, you know, I'm going to do it for my students kind of thing when I think it would be so much better if people could put stuff out where it, it could be shared. Uh, uh, and that's where something like Dropbox comes in. So I'm highlighting now the, uh, the, the slideshow version of this Stigmergy presentation I've given along with the folder that has all of the audio files in it. I'm just going to copy that and come over to my public Dropbox folder. Cool. And in that and you're going to make Dropbox it available folder, for us. I'm going to make it available to you, exactly. And, Great. and what happens there uh, is um, uh, my system is to put everything in a, a dated file, but you can do this however you like, you know, by subject or whatever. Uh, so today's the, uh, what is it, the ninth already? Here in New Zealand. Yeah, I, I guess you know, uh, for me is where it starts. Though I mean, that's you know, is uh, we were talking earlier about uh, Clay Shirky and the, you know, all, all, the way all this sharing starts is that you want to accomplish something. You have some intrinsic motivation to to do something, and and if you happen to be working in a sharing space, then. Of course, that's where the sharing begins. You know, obviously, you start with yourself, though, and you say, "Oh, how can I use this space? Dropbox, for example, whatever." And um, this leads to sharing. Yep, there, there's the link. So, uh, my system is actually still busily uploading it to the cloud. So, you probably shouldn't follow that link quite yet uh, until I get a kind of a green check mark that it's ready to go. Wow, this is bizarre. Yeah, I'm that's getting an uploading. infinite regress on the on the. <laughs> I better, I better <laughs> out of that. Oh well, infinity is great. Yeah. Um, yes, and and uh, don't, Jeff, don't forget to put that link. Oh, you've done it already. Good for you, Jeff. Okay, listen, uh, my my class is starting to come, and um, yep. anybody wants to be in a recorded video, you're welcome to come. Uh, this is Booty over here. He's uh, here. He is. He's one of my students, and now, the, and, but we're going to have to drop out of here. But listen, if you've got more to say, I encourage you to continue. Uh, I might be best if I mute out of here. Uh, but, but uh, in fact, I think I'll just um, mute my microphone. I'll just leave the video on if you want to see what goes on in the class. And uh, but, but please continue. Please, uh, I'll pick up recording. Okay. Thanks, Vance.
but thanks a lot for uh, entertaining me for this last hour, and uh, I'll get some more entertainment when I replay this. So I'll say good night, but please continue. Bye, Vance. All right, great. And and I, and it's coming up on two a.m. for you, John, and uh, I need to head out soon as well. I'm just wondering, like time frames for all this. When do you think there'll be the site for this actually going online? Not a problem. Uh, there's downloadable material up there at the moment. Uh, that is the, the zip file. For the file for Mac is uh, a zip file for Mac and an exe file for Windows uh, that uh, will put uh, the Wikidis Speech software right onto your menu and uh, give you all of these capabilities that I've demonstrated here. The 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 full you know, reworking of the site I was told was essentially finished Thursday, uh, but they didn't get back to me on Friday, so I think their the professor needs to kind of review the stuff, but maybe by the end of this next week. All right, well, we will look forward to staying tuned. Uh, and I know the cool casts are kind of late for you uh, down in New Zealand, but maybe we can reschedule sometime and get you back in. The, the, the MOOC cast has changed to the cool cast, collaborative open online learning. I love it. All right. <laughs> we'll send out some more uh, uh, wiki to speech links as soon as we've got, uh, got some more examples, especially what is there any other language that you'd uh, want to see? Korean? Sure. Uh, do you have Chinese? I hear that's a big market. Yeah, you know, the 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 um, uh, Mac Lion, the the latest version of the operating system, comes with a a Chinese voice, a Shin Sinji, that I was trying to get to work with the system. Uh, and if anybody else has played with that and gotten it to work, uh, I'd really like to hear about it. So. Um, I, I, if I can find some collaborators on that, it would be great. And thanks also for sharing this uh, OER University meeting stuff. One of the founding partners is Southern New Hampshire University, where I'm teaching an online course. Uh, ah, and perfect. I've worked with them before, and I had no idea they were into this stuff. So uh, more connections made here, learning together. Awesome. Hey, thanks for hosting, and uh, we'll we'll connect uh, again uh, next week, perhaps. Sounds good. Always a pleasure. Sleep well. All right. Take care.